Hello everyone. So after seeing the videos on load flows, Gaussian load flow, Newton Arsene load flow, let's start a new topic uh, in this series. And today I'm going to talk about what is known as bus impedance matrix, which is represented as Z bus. Now you have already studied about bus admittance matrix. So where is uh, bus admittance matrix? And what you had uh, studied about that is the current injection vector is nothing but the Y bus multiplied by V bus. So this is the voltage vector, this is the current injection vector and uh, this is N rows 1 column, this is N rows N columns and this is N rows 1 column. How to build the Y bus, how to given a system data, what are the steps? Several times you had seen. So this one you have already done. Now today what you're going to see is uh, Z bus. So which is just the inverse of this. So if I pre-multiply both with Y bus inverse. So Y bus inverse. This is the inverse of the matrix. Multiplied by I is equal to V. So this Y inverse into Y will become identity matrix. And just I'm just leaving that out. Another name for this Y bus inverse is actually Z bus. So, so I can also write it as Z bus multiplied by I is equal to V. So right away, you know how to calculate Z bus. So if I had given you a system and asked you to find out what is the bus impedance matrix Z bus, then you would calculate Y bus and then simply invert that Y bus then you will get the Z bus. So let's let's uh, do an example on this. So so problem one for today. So what I want to do is find the bus impedance matrix. For system below. So if I given uh, a simple three bus system like this, so there is a generator. This is the impedance of the generator and then there is impedance of the line. So J.1 per unit and then J.2 per unit. So these are my buses. This is bus 1, bus 2 and bus 3. And then uh, the impedance of the generator itself is J0.05. And this is the system given to you. So what you do is first form the Y bus. So how do you form the Y bus? So first let me convert the values into admittance. So Y12 is nothing but 1 by this. So minus J10. 1 divided by j.1 is this and then y23 is minus j5 and y11 or this is between y1 and 0 so that is 1 by j.5 so it will be minus j20 all right so i have now uh, now i have to form the y bus so how do i form the y bus so it says size is 3 by 3 so I make space for uh, 3 rows and 3 columns. Now look at the off diagonal elements between 1 and 2 J10 is there so it will become the minus will be ignored. So you, you had uh, seen this several times we had done between 1 and 3 nothing is there. So here J10 and 0. Now between 2 and 3 uh, I have minus j5 so here it becomes j5 and here it becomes j5 now at bus 2 there are no shent elements so i can just simply add this 15 and then minus j15 similarly at uh, bus 3 also there are no shent elements so it will become minus j5 now here uh, there is a generator in parallel with a in series with the impedance so this can be converted into norton's equivalent where i can have a, a current source in parallel with a impedance and then they are connected to bus 1. So that process also he had seen before 
in in the earlier videos where we are talking about building a y bus so this j20 basically gets added to this uh, after reversing the sign of course so this will become minus j10 minus j20 so it will become minus j30 so this is the uh, y bus for the system and therefore i can find the z bus simply by inverting it so let's do that z bus is equal to inverse of y bus so so here uh, minus j30 j10 0 j10 minus j15 j5 0 minus j15 entirely i'll do the inverse and of course for doing inverts i'll have to depend on uh, my uh, calculator so i'm just entering the data here so let me write it here okay capital y is equal to so i can actually take j common so i'll just keep j outside and then minus the so j multiplied by instead of j i'll have to keep i so i multiplied by minus 30 10 0 then the next row is 10 minus 15 5 and the next row is 0 5 minus 5 and then simply z bus is nothing but inverse of y bus so let's execute this program So I'm getting the output. So at the top, the Y bus is given and at below Z bus is given. So, and then I'm getting the output like this. So I'll do one thing. So for inverting, first of all, I'll ignore I here. And then now if I simply invert, I'm getting like this. And what is the inverse of I? So inverse of I is uh, minus I. So I'll just put minus I multiplied by this. So then I can again get the solution something like that. So I can do it that way also. But then for, for displaying purpose, I think I'll just, I'll not worry about I here. So this is the final output. So let me just copy or I think, I'm sorry, I'll not confuse you. So I'll just say I star and then let me do this let me reduce the font size not so much yeah so basically z bus has uh, three columns and uh, column one column two column three so i'll just for your convenience i'll re rewrite it here So this is uh, J0.05, the first one, then J0.05 is the second column element and then J0.05 is the third column element and this one will be J0.05, J0.15 and J0.15, I am copying the second column here and then finally third column I will copy it here, that is J0.05 j0.15 and j0.35 so this is the final z bus after inverting it now let's do another problem so this time i'm going to take a question like this so problem 2 find z bus now i am taking a system something like this so one two three so basically this is more uh, simpler system compared to the previous one just that this generator i am i am ignoring it 
So there, here is a system where there is no connection to the ground node. It's just one, two, and three. So let's try and see what happens. So first I'll build Vibers. So of course the Vibers size will be again three by three. And uh, let me write down Y12 is minus J10 and Y23 is minus J5. So this will be J10 and 0, this will be J10 and 0, this will be J5, this will be J5 and this will be minus J10, this will be minus J15 and this will be minus J5. Now I, I do my previous trick that is uh, building Y bus by inverting Z bus, sorry building Z bus by inverting Y bus. So let's see. So I'll just change the data here. So instead of minus 30 here, I'll just give minus 10. So I into minus 10, 10, 0, 10, minus 15, 5. So this is exactly the same. Now if I execute this, I'm getting Z bus as infinite, 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 and infinite. So there is some problem. And also matrix singular to machine precision. So, so we are not able to find it. So actually the, the problem is not with uh, anything else except that uh, we are getting the y is not invertible. So I'm getting infinite as the solution. So y inverse does not exist. So for doing load flow, for doing other studies or for finding y bus and all, we were, we were working with systems like this. But even for doing load flow, definitely some reference should be connected. So somewhere it should be connected to the reference, only then Z bus will be uh, definable. So for this problem, Y bus does not exist. Z bus equal to Y bus doesn't exist. So let's again uh, take up a slightly bigger problem and then see what happens. So third problem for now. That is uh, find Z bus. So I'll take a four bus system or even a five bus system. Something like this. Okay, so let me define J.1, J0.08, J0.2, J0.1111, J0 and J0.05. So these are my impedances for this, these uh, for this uh, system in per unit. So can we find the Z bus? So of course the answer is no, we cannot find the Z bus because none of these buses is connected to the ground. So therefore it is impossible to find the Z bus. So one of these we have to connect to the ground, then we can get it. So let's do, let's connect four to the ground with a shunt reactor whose impedance is J0.1. Now I can build the Z bus for this. So let's do it now. So first I'll, I'll find out all the, I'll invert all the elements. So this is minus J10, this is minus J12.5, that is 1 by 0 0.08. This is minus J5, this is minus J9, this is minus J20 and this is minus J10. So I have all this. Now uh, what is the Y bus? So I'll have five rows and five columns. So it always helps if you draw lines for yourself like this. So 
so 5 by 5 matrix and then between 1 and 2 j10 between 1 and 3 nothing between 1 and 4 j9 between 1 and 5 nothing so this i'll copy it here j10 0 j9 0 now coming to the second bus between 2 and 3 12.5 so j12.5 will come here 2 is not connected to 4 2 is connected to 5 j5 so these three elements i'll copy here 12.5 0 and j5 next coming to bus 3 only connected to 2 not connected to anything else so these two will be zeros these two will be zeros now coming to bus 4 connected to 1 and 5 so connected to 5 by 20 so this will be j20 this will be j20 now coming to the diagonal elements so one there are no shent elements so i just add these two minus j19 now I'll just add 10 plus 12.5 plus 5. So that is 22.5 plus 5, 27.5 minus J, 27.5. Next for this, minus J, 12.5. Now bus 4, there is a shent element of impedance J10, sorry, admittance J10. So it will be 29, again 39. So it will be minus J, 39. And finally here, there is no shent element, so it will become minus J25. So this is my Y bus. So again, how do I invert? So I'll just have to depend on a computer. So I'll just invert the Y bus. Then uh, I'll try to write down the solution here. So let me go to this. So here I will build the Y bus. So what is that? minus 19, 10, 0, 9 and 0. So minus 19, 10, 0, 9 and 0. That was the first row. 10 minus 27.5, 12.5, 0.5. That's my second row. Third row, 0, 12.5, minus 12.5, 0, 0. Fourth row, 9, 0, 0, minus 39 and 20. All right. Last row, 0, J5, 0, 20, 25. 0, 5, 0, 20 and minus 25. So this is my final matrix. And the Z bus is nothing but the inverse of this. So I'll simply run this code. So I'm getting the inverse of Z bus. So all five columns are here. Now notice that instead of 39 if I put 29 here that means I don't consider the shent element so if you don't consider the shent element then uh, it will be 20 plus 9 is j29 now if I run this so here you are getting 2.81 10 to the power of 14 so basically some uh, garbage number or infinite number you are getting so that's not the correct answer so the correct answer is what we got before so this one so these are the uh, five columns let me quickly edit them I'm just opening an empty word document oh I'm sorry this is difficult to edit I think I'll, I'll directly write it
so these are my uh, answers so let me write it here so the one eight four one six zero one six zero zero point one 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 two so this is the first column the second column zero point one six zero oh forget it it's all right, I'll I'll do I'll do something else. Slightly increase the font. So this is the first one. We'll keep it here. This is the second column. Keep it here. This is the third column. I think this is faster. This is the fourth column. And finally, this is the fifth column. So remaining all zeros, let me delete. So why I'm taking so much interest in uh, preparing this solution is that we have an alternate way of uh, creating Zbus and then we'll, we'll compare our results once we get that. So that's it. So this is the final Ybus. So what are the things that you learned in this video is that to Ybus is not sorry Zbus is nothing but the inverse of Ybus. So if, if a system data is given first you form the Ybus then you invert the y bus and then you will get the z bus condition is at least at one place there should be connection to the ground there should be a reference node for defining the z bus so this is the first method of uh, doing z bus so there are two ways to build z bus or to find z bus and the first way and the second way the first way is invert y bus and the second way is build step by step. So in our next video I am going to talk about how to build the z bus step by step. So hello everyone. So in the previous video we had just uh, been introduced to the topic of z bus and how to how to make the z bus one method was just invert the y bus and you get the z bus and here the another method i'm, I'm going to talk about is uh, building the z bus in a step by step process now why why this method is required is that sometimes uh, inverting a y bus will become uh, computationally intensive if you have a very large system like 100 buses or 500 buses and then making a y bus and then inverting the y bus will become very tedious job so we can directly do this process of building the z bus step by step but before we even we go forward first of all what is the use of z bus so you had seen uh, y bus is useful in load flow studies uh, because the load flow equations everything were were 
using the elements of the Y bus. Now Z bus will be useful for short circuit uh, studies. So the next topic after completing the Z bus, we are going to see uh, faults in a power system and then short circuit analysis and things like that. So where uh, we'll be using the Z bus. So that is why we are learning the Z bus uh, right now. So let's go about and uh, build the Z bus step by step. Now while building the Z bus step by step, so first is uh, there are there is some kind of uh, algorithm for building it, and then then there is a proof of proof or derivation of the algorithm. So usually in textbooks you will first find the derivation and then then the implementation of the algorithm. But in this uh, I'll just simply present you the algorithm. And then we'll we'll solve some problems, and then later on, you know, uh, we'll see why the algorithm is working and what is the proof of it and some derivation behind it and so on. So let me present the algorithm to build it. Now, if I go back to my uh, previous uh, example, so there there are this there's a simple not this system. We'll we'll go for this larger network. So we had this. Uh, question before. So let me take this and come to our present class. We just clean it up a little bit. Now let's say our objective is to build the Z bus for the system. So what you do is you start with where there is a reference you start with there. I mean I'm explaining the way to build it step by step. So you start from where the where the system is connected to the ground. So here so so from ground you are connect, you are creating a new bus. So the new bus is 4. So this is the first uh, thing. Then from four, I can go either to one or I can go either to five. So what is the, what is happening here? Earlier, before even before this was added, the size of Z bus was zero by zero. Now one bus is defined, so the Z bus will be one cross one. Next, I can add bus one. So to the existing system, I'm adding the one more system. That is this one. So what is the case here? An existing, a new bus is added to the existing bus like that. Now <coughs> I can again add bus 5 to this. So a new bus is uh, added to existing bus. Similarly, now the size of the system has become 3, three size. Now I can add 1 to 2 here. So this also I have added. Then I can add 2 to 3. This also I have added. And then finally, I can add two and five. So this, this, these are the steps. So, so you will actually notice that there are uh, cases. So what are the cases? There are actually four cases. So case one, case two, case three and case four. So here a new line added to reference bus. So that means from 0 I am adding to 4. In case 2 new line added to existing bus. That means once I do this for 4 if I add 5 then new line is added so that is nothing but the existing bus. Now again uh, case 3 can be a new line added between existing bus and reference. So this is also can be a case. So there might be a 5 and then there is a reactance here. So between an existing bus 5, I am adding it to the reference. So this, this, this is the case, but in our example, we don't have case 3. 
then finally new line added between existing bus existing buses between two existing buses so this is case 4 so where does this case come so after i add all this so when i add 2 to 5 then this case is coming so anyway so these are the cases so what are the formulas for each of these cases i think i'll prepare a one screen uh, summary of everything so that uh, you know this you can this you can uh, use it for reference so i'll just fill the entire screen with uh, four cases so case 1 and 2 will be at the top and case 3 and 4 will be at the bottom so i, re I require less space for this so that's why so what is case 1 so new line new line added to a reference so consider there is a reference and then i am adding a new line and the impedance is zb for this and then this is a uh, bus n so if that is the case then the formula is uh, z bus equal to uh, i'm sorry so there is already see what i what i am thinking uh, what i'd like to say is already an existing z bus is there in addition to that uh, z bus i am adding a new line like this so of course if there is nothing at the beginning then the z bus will be uh, zero uh, but if there is already an existing bus and then i am adding this then it will be case like this in fact i will not even draw this i will just write z bus is equal to zb so this is usually the first case it will be like uh, you are adding to the reference as it was so simply it is like this now let's do case 2 here new line added bit uh, to existing bus So now I will draw this, already a Z bus is there and then already it is having a ground and a new line is added. So this impedance is ZB and then let's say bus K is already there, to that bus K I am adding a bus Q. So a, a new line I am adding. So one thing you should notice is that the size of the system will increase because one bus is increasing so the size of the Z bus will increase. So z new equal to z old to that i will add one additional row below and one additional column to the right and this all elements will be zero this all elements will be zero and here it will be zb so that is the formula for case 2 now how this formula is coming what is the derivation uh, we will we'll do that maybe in the later video uh, but right now I am just presenting what is the algorithm pr procedure. So new line added between reference and existing bus. So that means this is Z bus. It has an existing bus K and it has a reference here so a new line having zb is added between these two an existing bus added to this so here the formula is z new equal to z old now the size will not change you notice that there is no additional uh, bus is coming so after the formula is not complete i am going to 
uh, add something more to this formula. So, to the existing bus, you subtract this particular element that is 1 by ZBB, sorry, ZB plus ZKK. This is in the denominator. Then ZK column and ZK row. We'll solve example problem so it becomes clear to you. So you take the kth column of the Z matrix and multiply it with the kth row of the Z matrix. Then you'll get another matrix and then to that you multiply this uh, scalar quantity uh, and then whole thing you subtract from the existing Z bus. Then you'll get the new Z bus. So this is the formula for that. And finally, I'll show you all these things with an example. Uh, soon. So finally there is a case 4. So what is case 4? New line added between two existing buses. So if you want to draw it as a diagram, so let's say this is your Z bus and there are two buses, bus K and bus Q. Between these two buses or let's call it bus J and K. Between buses J and K, I am adding a new impedance Z base, Z B to this two. So, there is also a re reference node which which is not involved in this. So in this case, how will you find? So the new Z bus will be the old Z bus minus something. So this minus is important. So that something is 1 divided by Z L L. So I will define what this Z L L is and multiplied by Z J minus K column. So you take the difference of the jth column and kth column then z j minus k row. You take the difference of jth row and kth. Now in all these things what is zll? So where zll is nothing but zkk plus zjj plus zb minus 2 into zjk. So this is the uh, formula for finding ZLL. So these are the four steps for building the uh, Z bus. So let us apply these four steps and try to find the Z bus for this particular matrix and then and then slowly we will see how it works. Now one thing uh, we would like to see here is that it is convenient to renumber because I am starting from here. So I would renumber the nodes so that later on I can readjust it. So node 4 will become node 1 because this is where I am starting. Then from here I will add this. So this will become node 2. From here I will add this line. So this will become node 3. From here I will add this line. So this will become node 4. And then uh, yeah. So from 2 I can add this or from 4 I can add this. It is my wish. Uh, so let me add this from here. So this will, in any case, this is this is always bus five. I can I can do it in both ways. So let's. So after after everything is over, so what I have to do is I have to just flip four and one, fourth row and fourth column. If I just uh, rearrange it, then I'll get the original. For the original number, I'll get the Z bus. So anyway, so without uh, any delay. Let's get into uh, our problem. So again, I'll uh, I'll copy this. Alright, so 
let's solve the following let's solve this so i begin my uh, solution by step 1 so step 1 is nothing but for 0 i am adding bus 1 and this impedance is j0.1 so this is like a case 1 so therefore my z bus is nothing but j0.1 that's it now let's do step 2 so in step 2 what i'm having is already step 1 is like this to that i am adding bus 2 and what is the impedance of this line so if i go up the impedance of the line is j0.1111 so this is the impedance i am adding to this so what will be my z bus so this is like a case 2 where a new bus is added to the existing bus a line connecting new bus added to the existing bus so my z bus will be something like this I'm sorry so did I mention zeros here oh it is not zeros it's actually I have to I have to copy the kth row and kth column this is not zeros this is zk column and then zk row and this is also zp plus zk so i got confused so this is the correct formula so kth column kth row and then this thing so so since i am adding to the first one i just copy this so this this column will copy here so this will be like this this column will copy here so it will be like this and then here to this z11 i'll add the, this one so it will become z0.2111 so this is my z bus up to this now let's continue step 3 so what is my step 3 so i i already have this ground 1 and then 2 is added now step 3 i let this one 2 is added to so this 3 and j0.1 is the impedance so j0.1 is the impedance so now my z bus will be same as the previous z bus so in fact i'll copy it so just copy this z bus So from this I will delete the so because the size of the system is going to increase Now the new bus is being added to bus 2. So I have to copy this column here that is J0.1 and then J0.2111. Similarly I have to copy this row here J0.1, J0.2111 and finally here J0.211 plus this point row. So this will be 0.311. So this is my Z bus up to this one. So bus 3 is there. 1, 2, 3. Next I have this bus 4. So again 12.5 uh, or J0.08 impedance is being added. So bus 4 addition is also easy. So just I take this entire. First I delete this. I take the existing Z bus. To that existing z bus i'll add the one more column 
so let me uh, uh, write it on top here so I'm adding one more column here so in this new column because the new bus uh, 4 is being added to 3 so I have to copy this third row I have to copy this third row here so J0.1 J0.2111 J0.3111 J0.1 2111 3111 so here whatever is a Z33 that is 3111 to that I will add the new impedance of the line that is this one so it will be like this J0.391 so if nothing is wrong up till here so this is my Z bus so so what is the status so bus 1 is added bus 2 is added bus 3 is added bus 4 is added now bus 5 either I can add it to the first bus or I can I can come this way or this way two different ways are there so let me take this route so I am adding bus 5 to bus 3 with impedance of this so this line I am adding okay so let's do that so this was uh, I am just missing the step this is step 4 now I will do step 5 so in this step 5 bus 5 he is added to bus 3 so it's a new bus is being added to existing bus 3 with uh, J0 point with the impedance is 0 0.2 Per unit impedance all right so what I have to do so again you know the procedure now simply copy the matrix that we got so far and then this I will increase by one more row and one more column so adding one more row here and adding one more column here so here is where it gets tricky so this is bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, bus 4 and this is bus 5 so since bus 5 is adding to bus 3 so I have to copy the third column not the fourth column so don't get confused here so I am copying the third column here and j0.3 triple one then uh, third column again j0.3 triple one similarly here also i will copy the third row here j0.1 j0.2 triple one and then j0.3 triple one j0.3 triple one and the next step is here to this z33 element I have to add the this one so j0.3 triple 1 plus j0.2 that is being added now so it will be 5 triple 1 and with j so j0.5 triple 1 so so far we had uh, added the fifth bus also so so if if I am considering the network without this line so so far whatever we calculated the z bus is correct so now I am adding this line so a line is being added between 4 and 5 so let me go to a new page so what is the step now see how many steps we have done before step 5 so let's go to step 6 a new line added between existing buses 
1 and 2, 1 and 5. So between 1 and 5, I am adding a new line uh, whose impedance is So, J0.05 per unit. I think we are in 43. J0.05 per unit. Okay. So, let me get the, get the latest matrix, which is here. So, we need to do something what is known as Zj minus k column. So, because line is bit added between 1 and 5, I have to take the first column. From that, I have to subtract the fifth column. So, take all the 5 elements of the first column. All of them are j.1. From this, I subtract all of this. So, let me take help of... Uh, my MATLAB to do this. I am creating a new file. So, so far my Z bus is something like this. So, up to here I built uh, manually, but so, but from now on last step we need to use the computer. So, it can also be done manually, but it is little cumbersome. So let me enter this. So j is common. So I will just put i multiplied by. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. 5 rows have added. 5, 5 columns have added. Now coming to the second row. 0 0.1. So let me. Two triple one, two triple one, so I have one, two, three, four, five. So the same element is being copied up to here. So let us come to the third row. Next three three element is three and then other two are also same. So zero point three triple one, zero point three triple one, zero point three triple one. Next come to the fourth row. So fourth row is point one, point two, double one. So let me point one. 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, double one, and then 3, triple one. Next last row, 0 0.1, 2, triple one, Three triple one. Then again same. And finally I get zero point five triple one. All right. So now we finish the building of this Z bus up till now. So let's get Z J. J K column. So how to subtract columns of a matrix? So 
z bus so i want all rows and third column sorry first column because is it first column or third column so i am adding 1 to 5 so the between 1 and 5 so i'll take the first column all rows first column so it will be just z from that i'll subtract all rows fifth column so this is a difference so i get it then similarly the row also So here first column all rows and here fifth column oh I think I'll have to verify once again all rows first column uh, okay first row all columns minus fifth row all columns so these two will come so let's display and see how it how it works. So this is Z itself. So this is JK row. So it's a row matrix and this is a column matrix. So you can see uh, roughly I'll verify my point 0.1, point 0.1 is 0 is correct. Point 0.1 minus this, so negative of this, okay. So this third element is also correct. Fourth element is also correct and fifth element. So I'm just roughly checking myself. So other thing is also correct. So I need to calculate that element called ZLM. So what is ZLM? So here if you look at the formula, so here ZLL is ZKK plus ZJJ plus ZB minus 2ZJK. So that's what I'll do it. So capital Z. So let me define our so one comma one plus capital Z phi comma phi. This will add both the diagonal elements plus Z base. That is uh, whatever is a new line I'm adding the impedance of that new line. So this is a new line J zero point zero five. I would add i into 0 0.05 plus 2 into zjk so that is 1 comma 5 oh this is minus actually so once i have this then i can actually find out the new value of z bus so z bus is equal to the old z bus minus 1 1 divided by z l l so this is a this is a uh, single number that is getting multiplied by the matrix so what is the matrix that is z k column multiplied by z k row so this will give me the new value of the z bus now to be to keep it simple i i'll just say imaginary value of z i'll print it because z has only the imaginary components so so let me increase this So finally this is my answer so I just copy this and then I go back to the page so after calculations from MATLAB code so even the code it will be nice to write it so let's see what we can do so
so this is my final z bus so i have to say j now the question is what was the z bus in the in the first method of doing this calculation so let me go back to my first method go to the last so i got this i think due to some reason it's not oh it is matching but i think we have to rearrange the rows so i will come back to this so this is the solution that uh, we got for the from the first problem this is solution by y bus inversion for the same system so is do is do do this is sorry are these two things same so it doesn't appear to be same but then uh, if we have to since we renumbered so this is actually the first second third fourth and fifth so fifth remains fifth whereas this first and uh, fourth we need to reorganize some way so so let me check that and then uh, i i'll i'll continue so i'll just take a pause here so it turns out that there's no mistake what we got to the correct solution just that i need to do some kind of reordering that means uh, if i go up so here uh, so i am renumbering 1 to 2 so now i have to i have to take it back that means the second row and column will now become the first row and column similarly third will become second fourth will become third and then first will become fourth and fifth will remain fifth so basically i have to just do one shifting first column i have to shift to fourth position and then uh, fourth first row I have to shift to fourth position so what i have done i have taken this uh, original solution so let me just delete this so i'll take this original solution make a copy of it so now what i do is make some place and move the fifth a little bit similarly i'll make some place for the row and move the fifth row a little bit we oh, just got copied let me cut this so i'm just creating some gap so if you notice uh, i'm not done anything just move the fifth row a little bit right fifth row a little bit down and the fifth column a little bit right then i'll bring the first uh, column and then adjust it here so now first is shifted to fourth two it will become one three will become two four will become three and so on and then i I'll, i'll take the first row and again shift it to this gap so finally this is my uh, z bus so let me just make it neat so after all the manipulation so this is my z bus j into so now you notice these two are exactly same so let's let's just check this so okay second column also matching third column also matching fourth column also matching and fifth column also 
matching. So, so this this is exactly equal. So this is solution by step by building step by step. So what I have done in this video is I just showed you an example problem and the same example problem I had solved in two different ways and uh, we, we got the same solution for both. So in the next video maybe I will cover the derivation and you know why this works and all so on and maybe we will try to solve some more problems. Thank you.